So the way we sort of go about setting it, there's, there's lots of different ways to pick out a heart rate zone. Um, and generally speaking, even if you are wrong, you're not that far wrong from, uh, from getting them in the right space. But the, the most efficient way of doing it is um, to understand where their threshold heart rate band is and then anchor everything around, around that point. So we find um, our threshold heart rate band two ways. One, we do a 30 minute open rate test on the ergometer um, and we average the heart rate between minute 10 and minute 25. Um, and that will be a very good indication and that will also give us a power output in that range that we can use for ergometer prescription around their training. So we find that to be the most accurate. As long as they're nice and fresh and, and you know they haven't, they're not fatigued when they do that test. Uh, the other way that we've uh, done it is with a step test um, to be able to look at increasing workloads and the heart rate and blood lactate and RPE response to that. And we have software that will pick that inflection point of the curve out and label that as being that value there is their threshold heart rate and then we work out our zones based on that. But generally speaking, in a rough thing, heart rate, uh, threshold heart rate happens somewhere between 88% and 92% of your maximum heart rate. And then our zones are just worked off that. Now we, we have, it's, it's a really interesting one, one of the nuances that it's taken me a bit of time to understand um, is that if we do a test with a, a rower and they're super fresh, they'll have this really responsive heart rate um, to uh, the same input, uh, whether it be a 30 minute open rate or, or a step test. Um, however, when they're in routine training and they're in a little bit of a fatigued state, they have a, a probably a more normal response, it's a little bit suppressed. So we actually end up subtracting a few beats off the threshold heart rate and also the all of the zones of the heart rate because quite often if you said, um, now based on your step test that you did or your 30 minute open rate test that you did when you were fresh, um, this is your heart rate band, but then they do two weeks of training and they try to get into that heart rate band they find it exceptionally difficult and they're actually working well over where they're supposed to be to be able to try and get into that heart rate band. So we, we worked out that we had to take about five or six beats off the bands to be able to get it into what we consider to be a training heart rate zone. So do you think that the, the, the test is more valid to do when in, in a bulk of normal training instead of... Exactly, yeah, don't fret. If you want a performance measure, then you'd be super fresh for your test. But if you want a, a measure that is relevant to your training and to, to be able to prescribe training, then um, you try and do the test when they're in a training state. Um, or you do a performance test when they're super fresh and get a great performance and you modulate the zones that you get from that to be something reflective of what they would be when they're in a training state. So would you, make, and if you're talking about this 30 minute free rate test, would you make that test analogous to like a the yeah, it, it, it's a, look, ideally if we were doing it by the book, we'd do an hour test. We've, ta we, we've talked about it, we've tried it, um, some of the people have gotten into it, but it is a real, it's a real stretch. Um, so what we're trying to do is get a routine measure that you can do that doesn't take you three days to recover from, um, uh, that is, can be completed by anybody. And we've even toyed with a 20 minute all out test um, because we found that um, they can actually do that without hurting themselves too much. But the 30 minute band is probably about right, 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. Um, it will take a little bit of understanding about how you pace that and it takes them a couple of times to get that pacing right. But really when it comes down to it, when they've mispaced it, they're only about five watts lower than what they would be if they paced it really, really well. And an improvement in that score is only a couple of watts. So it's a, it's a really small percentage as a significant improvement in your threshold over the time um, as a result of training. So, um, so we found the 30 minute open rate or free rate, as you said, is um, a pretty easy test to administer and it's a really reliable test. And more importantly, it's great training 
and they can go and do training after it as well. So it's not just, right, you do a test and that's it. You can actually go and do training on the back you of it. You don't need to taper it per se. You may, not, you may not do an intensity before, but you won't taper No, you don't need to taper for it. And you know, you do a normal warm up and it's a good training session in itself. And if they execute it well, it's a really reliable measure.